All right, this is the uh, May 29th meeting of the Conway uh, Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later on by the public and residents. Okay, first item on the agenda, we have uh, minutes of the May 21st meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review yeah. the minutes? They look great. Any additions or corrections? No, nope, we're all set on those. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the May 21st meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we have three warrants. We have a warrant, a vendor warrant for $113,483, a payroll warrant for $115,631, and a payroll deduction warrant of $27,844. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil, do you have any relevant meetings that you attended well, last, last uh, week? Since right after the last Monday, I left in a hurry to get to the Frontier oh, right, special right. meeting okay. where um, we appointed Darius Modesto. Well, we didn't appoint him yet, but he's going to be the interim superintendent for a year before a decision is made on a final one. Um, oh, interim for a year. Okay. It's going to take that long, you think, to, um, to get your search together? No, the reasoning was that... Um, he should have a chance to really see whether he wants the job before, um, because right now he's the frontier principal and he's very successful at that. Um, and it, it's more it's more out of respect to him to make sure that he really wants it. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and and that yeah, because he's got you know he's got three children. It, it's it, the, the nighttime commitments are something different for him. Sure. Um, Does he have all the certification? Oh yeah. For superintendent. Yeah, along with about 10 other people in that building. Wow. So, um, my, uh, and we also approved the next three-year contract for the financial uh, advisor or business manager, Patty uh, Cavanaugh. Right. Is there a search for a new Frontier principal? Um, there will be, and but it's only going to be an interim one-year appointment in case that we want to, we want to keep there in case... Um, so and, and that was a compromise reached uh, at the in between 11 p.m. and 12 midnight. That was a, her, a really long meeting yeah. when when the 27 elected officials are in one room um, that, that with all four it. school committee, five school committees, uh, oh. <laughs> and they actually approved uh, initially two different ways of hiring the superintendent and. The possibility was very real for a minute that the elementary schools as a group was going to hire one. And frontier as an which would it, it, it's a it's a structure that is fraught with difficulty and that's a good example of one um, apparently uh, yeah. but it was wow what a meeting okay okay All right. did you uh, any other meetings no that no. was that was enough okay. for me that was enough that's enough <laughs> Robert uh, well I went to a frontier regional planning board meeting along with Joe and Tom. And no, could, Franklin County. Franklin County, yeah. And they could probably talk about it more than I could, but uh, but we uh, we talked about abandoned buildings uh, and how and how you close abandoned buildings and uh, and I guess we do have a few here in Conway, but it it sounds like our problems are not like Greenfield, where they have a hundred and some number of them. Uh, serious abandoned the, buildings. The urban areas have yeah. uh, many more than, than we do. Yeah. And the only other sort of interesting news to me was one of the things that's been going on they talk about is that is looking at Northfield Mount Hermon and the relicensing of the Northfield Mount Hermon pump storage station and mm -hmm. which has had a lot of controversy <laughs> and and, uh, and yeah. uh, they've postponed the relicensing for a year. So they're so they're so all, all, all of the deadlines that were like virtually passed are have a year more to go. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I had many meetings last week, but none relevant to our situation here. So that's, that's not that much counts, of a story. That counts yeah. as none. Okay. Um, John, is John around? Do we have John? All right. I'll tell I you. Don't what, think so. We'll. we'll uh, yeah. All right. We'll we'll bring John in when when he gets here. Um, Okay, so we'll go right down. We don't have any old business. 
uh, new business, uh, mass works projects, roads, and wastewater. Is that you, Ron? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's both Ron and both. Joe. Yeah. It's a, a double team. We're double, we're double team. This and, is great. <laughs> and so the reason there's, there's, they're both here at the same time is MathWorks has different programs. Mm -hmm. And um, the one that has been best known to Conway and other small towns is STRAP, which is the Small Town Rural Assistance Program. And that has grants that are only for a million dollars or under. Right. And you can only apply for one every three years. They also have a public works slash economic development program, which is much more competitive. Uh, and that um, is a possibility. And we could apply for that at the same time as we apply for mm -hmm. um, the STRAP grant, which is pretty much just roads these days. So, um, Ron has been talking about wanting a strap grant for some roads. Joe wants a mass works grant some way for the wastewater. For the sewer rates. So, yeah. so the, um, the community septic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, when everybody, and ever anybody hears the word sewer, they think sewer treatment, they think right. a plant, all of this kind of stuff, and uh, well, that's why we changed it to wastewater system. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, he suggested. It, I guess now it's really a septic. Is it now the community waste, septic system? The wastewater rats? Now? Is that a <laughs> sewer like rat? No sewer rats. Okay. Right. Okay. <coughs> uh, so uh, it, this is really a question of how best to move forward. Um, again, the project, the problem with the the PWED, Public Works Economic Development, is that it is very competitive and would be difficult uh, to move forward with wastewater, but otherwise we're, 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 mm -hmm. we're dealing with a, uh, a three-year delay in uh, one of the projects. And Joe did come up with a, uh, uh, the wastewater committee got a quote for under a million dollars for the system, right. um, which was so little under a million dollars that in three years it might be more than a million dollars. Um, so those are all considerations. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, Ron of course uh, is getting a third of the money he needs from Chapter 90 mm -hmm. to do uh, the work that needs to be done in town. So um, this is a, a discussion about um, who wants to go what route and is and, it true uh, that we're not competing with each other? It, you would not be competing if you went for the PWED grant. But I would if we went for the Mass Works? Yes. Which, uh, for the strap. Okay. They're, they're both Mass Works. Mass Works now is it's five I didn't realize grant strap programs. could be used for the sewer system. Well, that's a good point. It probably can't. Uh, but that's a matter of policy. Um, and, but that is the current policy. So you were planning on going with uh, economic development anyway. I think so, based on your email. That you, yeah. You, you communicated, yeah. Not communicated with somebody at the MassWorks office. It sounded like um, yeah. you would use strap for one and PWED, I guess, for, mm -hmm. the, for the other one. This is under a J. Ash economic development. Uh, You know, I am not sure because Mass Works has so many different angles to it. Uh, the people who administer both the PWED grant and the STRAP grant mm -hmm. here is the Department of Transportation. Okay. All right. What I was told was a Mass Works grant doesn't matter what what it's used for. You're only eligible for three years. Uh, once every three years. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, and that, and that was clarified um, as as that's a strap grant. Just as a strap grant? Yeah. she told me that it was anything to do, any mass works grant. But no, we can apply for both the PWED and the strap at the same time and, and get both of them. That was a clear for King. Oh, okay. uh, Kathy Stevens uh, wrote an email. 
uh, to that regard. Yeah, I didn't understand your last email. It says you can apply for both, but does that mean you can get one of each or just one? Do they communicate with each other? Would they know? Well, we can do some more clarification on that. It's clear that you can apply for both. Mm -hmm. But it's not clear to me whether you'll get two awards. I was under the understanding oh, you okay. get one. One award. So you can put in two applications. Yeah. Well, that's possible. In which case, I have to say, the, the likely one would be the road, because the p -Wed grants are <coughs> much more competitive. Right. Yeah. So I guess the question is, do we apply for both and see what happens? Knowing we'll only get one award, or yeah. do we pass on the... Sewer. So that's the question for the Leach board. Field, I guess. Sort of well, why would it hurt to, to, to apply for both? Well, then whoever didn't get it would have to wait three years. Or oh, you can only apply one. once every three years? You can apply every year, but it's yeah. only going to be awarded once every three years. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So regardless of which grant you apply for under the MassWorks umbrella, you only get one, every th one award every three years? So and they're, if, and they're not even guaranteeing. So that. if Ron gets it, then we can't apply for three years. Is that what you're saying? You can yeah. apply the next you, year. You can apply, but but, but you won't get you it. Won't get you it. won't get a grant. Oh, I see. For three years, there's, there's a one year cycle. Yeah. yeah, which yeah. is where we're we are automatically already. disqualified. I guess. And when do we get one left? Which we're on. The we're on the three-year three year cycle. Yeah. Yeah. That was for the playground. Or, yeah. 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 yeah, the playground. The downtown safety improvements. Okay. Okay, so if that's the question, should you apply for, what for one or, or yeah. two? Should we apply for both? A absolutely. Why, why would it hurt to apply for both? Right? Well, you know, we, we have basically two different parts of town that have been planning mm -hmm. along these lines, and they're now in conflict. But. I guess the question would be, is applying for the Leaps Field project going to diminish Ron's chances of getting a grant? I don't think so. No. It sounded like... No, it's a, it's a separate determination. I think a lot of what would determine is the grant writing is not one of the easiest things. So I guess the, the other question is, if we were to apply and Sewer was to get one, can Ron wait three years for his reapplication? If we got an award for the sewer system, yes. then Ron would not be able to apply for two more years. And vice versa. Well, he if wouldn't he be able an award, to get an award, it. Yeah. I couldn't apply for three years. You couldn't get the award for two years. You, you can apply and they'll tell you what, what's right and wrong with your application, mm -hmm. which is a useful exercise to go through. They'll give you feedback on your application. But yeah, so that's, that's the problem. So uh, Ron, can you explain what your project is? that you would be using this money for? It would be for redoing Shelburne Falls Road from the center of town here to just par past Hart Road, a full reclamation in Blacktop. That's also with us doing a lot of the drainage work ourselves and all the uh, extra work that goes on. Mm -hmm. It's the only way the, the, there's not enough money to do the whole thing as a project. So trying to do it as a, to get as much done without hurting my budget. Um, so if we could get the grant to redo the reclamation and the block dock, then that would be a huge, well, be close to a million dollars to, for what they, them two projects, you know, the reclamation and the block That's the hill that's the important part. Well, it's the right. whole thing. I mean, the road's not in, it's not many, got many years left before the rest of the road's going to look like the hill. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. so the hill is really cut, falling apart. Oh, this winter did a yeah. really bad yeah. number, but mm -hmm. it did on the, all the roads. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, to me, I, I don't mean to be taking anything. I've been talking about this for three years with Don yeah. about, you know, this project and we, we just don't have enough Chapter 90 money or mm -hmm. regular budgeted money to yeah. take on a project that size. Yeah. Um, so I'm, 
I mean, if, the, if you guys want to wait longer, then it means that we just keep doing some Band-Aid repairs to it. So you want to make Buckland look even worse? No. <laughs> people that can move through the line will leave. Poor uh, Buckland. Their roads are atrocious. They still leave a little piece from yeah, that, yeah, That's right. Yeah. They're applying for MassWorks money to do their end of Sheldon yeah, Falls Road. Sure they are. Yeah. 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 Whatever they call it, Conway Road, probably. Yeah, I don't want my road to look like 116. Yeah, yeah. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but. I see somebody somebody made a nice yes. little marker out in the road. I liked it. I liked it. So if he's looking for a million, and how much are you looking for? No, about the same. For <laughs> so I, it's it's um, worthy projects. The thing that the other question is that if it comes to pass that either one of you are asking taxpayers at town meeting to fund part or all of these projects it's much better going in to say we applied for the grant and it got turned down than than to be asked did you apply for a grant and say no um probably true that's a good point and, and that yeah, yeah, even though you know you'll be turned down if you get in, <laughs> and again i have to say the probability is uh, that the strap grant would be funded before the PWED grant, just because of the, with the PWED grant, it's it's um, it's statewide competition with all the big cities and towns. Yeah. The strap grant is for small towns. I've been trying to follow the farm bill, but it seems like it's in trouble. So you know, at the fed, federal level. So I don't know what's going to come out of that. Whether there'll mm -hmm. be any money for sewer systems when they get all done. Typically, what they've done is they've provided low interest loans. That's mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we wouldn't be hurting ourselves if we applied for both, correct? I don't think so. Okay. So there's no negative to apply for both. Is that true? Just the amount of work involved. <laughs> yeah. Ron would refer every complaint about Shelburne Falls Road to the select board for the next three years. <laughs> if you've lost. <laughs> in three years, that hill will be really bad. <laughs> and I'll be retired in three years. <laughs> Does your project include everything? Hitching up two households? And, yeah. And you can do that for a million dollars? That's what we're being told. You know. We did spend all of the sixteen thousand. Uh, I gave Tom a report for the select right. board. Um, we haven't asked for the rest of the money to do the engineering, so this is still. These are still preliminary, preliminary prices. <coughs> we did one study, got an estimate. This is a supposedly a refined estimate, mm -hmm. and it's still one big field. It's in one, the it's a leach park. field. It's a community leach and field. A, and a, and, and a pipe going under the river? I believe so, yeah. Well, it served River Street and Main Street. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. Up, up to the... And, and there is an operations and maintenance cost to it that would then be borne, presumably by people who right. are ben benefiting yeah. from it. Yeah. Right, sure. Yeah. I, we haven't, at last town meeting, we were directed to poll the citizens. Mm -hmm. But I personally think if we have no money, polling the citizens is... Not a, a worthy endeavor. Yeah, I, don't. I responded to that. They're all going to say I responded no. to the, to the uh, no. questionnaire, but I'm told yeah. very few others did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think till we have a financial plan that's viable, doesn't it doesn't pay to ask that question. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to spend a million dollars of their own money. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They might spend a million to fix the road, but they they <laughs> won't spend a million for a sewer system. I, I, I you know the arguments. That. If I, my system fails and I live in Shirkshire, if your system fails, who's going to help me pay for mine? I, I, I agree with you. you the road issue. There were arguments in the other direction that were never brought up. Like most of the people that would stand to benefit from the sewer project um, derive very little to no benefit from the highway funds and the highway department because most of those people are served by 116 and it's a state responsibility. So, um, to the, so the people that say it only benefits you, the, the, the people that would benefit from the sewer could turn around and say, all of my life I've been paying for the highway department to benefit you. 
Um, the, the, and that argument was it, never made. Well, it it was, nothing against the highway department. I want everybody to travel safely. It was made, it was made silently. And then the argument was, but there's nothing to stop these people from driving on the other roads into, whereas nobody else can use someone else's septic system. So. Unless you visit Phil at his house. Right. <laughs> Toilets available to the public. <laughs> All right. Toilet so, system, obviously. The, the, lady that, the lady that I talked to this morning, she recommended that you call her and talk to her because there's things available, um, studies and stuff like that that you can do to help your case. Okay. And that might be a good start too. Okay. Yeah, and that, that was not reason. Kathy Stevens, oh, that no, was somebody else. Jackie for Turtle in Boston. Well, at least I would get it written and we'd get feedback on the grant. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so let, let's do both. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Have a good night. Thanks, Thank Ron. You Thank you, Ron. Yeah, You're up, John. Right. We got you under public concerns. Why don't, why don't you take okay. that seat there so you can be on camera, oh, boy? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Because this is, yeah, this is not just the batting cage. No. Yeah, I mean, uh, so people have. Uh, you hear people complaining about the. Uh, Ball field, and I don't think I've ever come before you guys. I've been mm -hmm. somehow inherited it right after the project was finished. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, if you hear complaints that that's we're thinking about making that part of our recreational uh, committee uh, assignment, is you know, complaining that would be one of the recreational activities under our yeah, domain. New committee, but, <laughs> yeah. but perhaps it's not unique to the uh, rec committee. Uh, anyways, but I want to just give you a little history because you hear a lot of things and just. Tell uh, the select board where we're at. Okay. So, and maybe ask, you know, get you guys thinking about going forward. So, uh, you know, a long time ago we had that drainage issue, right? So, in the right field would be wet every year and mm -hmm. kids couldn't play ball. And there was a big project the uh, rec committee did. We got a grant. It was a huge project, right, to redo it. So, the outfield drainage was uh, definitely has been improved since then, for sure. Mm -hmm. However, we kind of introduced some infield issues that we didn't have. Um, they initially put this red clay soil in there, thinking that was going to be low maintenance. Uh, I think there was some communication problems with the vendor, but um, it basically tur would turn to concrete, and uh, kids were getting hurt sliding. I think we mm -hmm. select board actually got some complaints about that. Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, so I kind of took that on in the, with the rec committee uh, to try to fix that. What we well, one of the issues is there's no water down there, and mm -hmm. from what I've learned from talking to baseball experts at Deerfield Academy and other places, is anytime you have a ball field, you basically need water. So when the soil's too dusty, you water mm -hmm. it down. When it's too hard, you water it down and dr drag it. So we're kind of struggling with that. Um, but we did uh, gradually replace the top layer of that red clay with a more standard baseball soil. We actually had two uh, rec committee. We had some excess money at the end of two years. And I think we put in 30 tons of uh, soil. 30 tons? What did that cost? It was in the thousands, like 10, maybe 10,000 total. Wow. Okay. However, we couldn't really... Uh, so under that inch of uh, expensive red clay soil, it didn't really work. Uh, there's rocks, so we couldn't or maybe it's two inches. We couldn't dig up too deep. In fact, you still see rocks coming up down there because mm -hmm. there's this drainage layer underneath. So we took out the top layer, we replaced it with this dirt. So that has mm -hmm. solved the issue of kids getting hurt. It's basically no longer concrete. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, it's improved. And it's, the other issue is the drainage of the, feet, the baselines itself, the uh, soil part, has also been an issue. Mm -hmm. Um, it definitely does not as good as other towns. In other towns, typically the same day it rains, you, they can get a game in. It doesn't turn to mud. We typically have to wait a day or two, especially in the spring. So uh, it's really not what it should be. Also, the grass is not really nice like it should be, nice lines and everything. But it's, it's, it's been usable. Um, it requires a lot of maintenance, which has been mostly uh, 
me and uh, we bought this baseball drag which actually works pretty well it's a special piece of metal with mm -hmm. teeth on both sides so I take my tractor down there once a week and uh, try to dig it up to keep it kind of aerated and not mm -hmm. not compacted um, it's, we have had a little bit of a wild west issue there and we've had to stop other people from doing that that kind of don't know what they're doing I just slide mention that in passing you mean other people that try to pull this drag thing? And yeah, and they, they like actually compact the soil. So. <laughs> oh. one, okay. uh, one time this year I got a little mad because I had spent like three hours down there and this guy came and put his kid on the back of his, this, uh, this other drag we have and compacted the soil after I uncompacted it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so we had talked to him. He's, he was trying to help, but right. he just doesn't understand like how it works. And he, you know, everyone has an opinion. Oh, you just you know, get this and it'll all be fine. Get some farm equipment it up yeah that's that's how we got a lot of the rocks up in the first sure. place we used uh, some farm equipment so that's where we're at uh, without the water it's tricky because I have to go down there on the exact right day which of course is hard for me coaching baseball and doing all this other stuff. <laughs> sure because yeah. if it's if it's too dry it's already compacted if it's too wet that heavy a drag sinks in the mud so without water it's hard um, where's the nearest water do you know stream well um, uh, is there power? There's That's power the near the. There's power near the. Um, one of the dugouts. Uh, so I mean, I uh, John. I mentioned this to John Gage, and he said, "Yeah, you can't take the water out of there." Although the hockey people used to do it, but uh, we'll we'll come to the con con stuff in a minute. Um, so that's where we're at. We, we did, Tom Shaw donated a bat, he's moving and donated a batting cage to the mm -hmm. town, which is very nice of him. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested in that because it's really great for practice. You don't have to, you can just send a couple kids to do batting and the balls don't go everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did get rejected, um, our RDA got rejected. The uh, ComCom felt that because the poles would be in there permanently, it would be a permanent alteration. They would have to go through the NOI process. So, it's, what's that NOI mean? Uh, some more, I, I don't know, it's but it's very notice involved. of intent. <laughs> yeah, notice, notice of intent. And uh, the donor has, has uh, basically completed the NOI? He's, right? He volu graciously volunteered to work on it, so that was wow. good, because I didn't have time. But he's, uh, he does construction for a living. So. So, so the CONCOM objected because the poles would be permanent? <coughs> yeah. Is that because it was too close to the stream? It's, it's within that, well within that 200 foot, I guess, right. is there. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I mean, it's a little hard to understand because... We're, we're only talking about poles here, right? Eight yeah, poles? Like one inch poles, yeah. Eight one inch poles? Diameter. And the gauge work. They, Which is a, they, uh, uh, they could uh, have objected with to uh, them, yeah. a previous plan which they um, said they would only need the the RDA for um, but then when when it, it couldn't be done uh, setting them up with the guy wires that it's it's using now um, they because uh, of the danger of kids running around and tripping on them and things like that then uh, then they said well now we're gonna have to ask you to do the the NOI before it was a more or less discretionary. They were using all the discretion they could. There's something <laughs> in the wetland, the WPA, that says something about permanent structures, I think, or permanent alteration. So that's was their concern. It's a little hard to understand because there's all this other, just from a common sense point of view, not a legal point of view, because there's all these other fences everywhere and structures and everything. Eight poles is a permanent is a permanent structure. The the, the plans are to make them permanent. Yeah, they would be up all year, yeah. Because they're, they're cast in a sauna tube with concrete. Okay, so you can't do that because the CONCOM doesn't want it. Well, because it's, it's state law that requires an NOI, which is the process that they're going through now. Okay. So it's so moving it, forward. It, it may be approved. Yeah. May be approved, yeah. Maybe some approved. additional okay. uh, work, yes. Okay. It, but the one thing that's been, uh, you know, that really kind of let me know that, okay, anything uh, I try to do down there, whether it be a well or a 
we also need a shed down there. I think that's on this list too. We really need a shed if we're going to get a tractor down there. Right now, I'm I'm, tra I'm taking my tractor and my pickup truck down there once a week. With ramps, it's a real pain in the neck. Oh, yeah. Um, well, there is well, a anything's going to need down there. Uh, way, yeah. I think anything we try to do down there, that's just... There's a shed with uniforms and stuff in it. The old, sh the existing shed? Yeah. Yeah, and that's pretty full, but this would be... No, good. no, no, but how did that... You mean the old shed? How you... did that get put there? It, I think it's a way. F well, they went through an NOI for that whole project. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's over. Uh -huh. It's over. It's it's part of that. But I think it's pretty far yeah. away too. The old shed used to be a temporary structure right near the stream, but I don't think we'll get away with that. We had additional second shed many years ago. If you remember the old field. Yeah. The main purpose of all of the permitting is to see whether or not there are any conditions that should be attached to the work. Mm -hmm. So I just mentioned that uh, I think we're going to pursue that, and um, unfortunately, you know, it kind of delays it for this baseball season. I was hoping to do like something quick, but maybe in time for the playoffs. You never know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're going forward. Okay, my son's in his last year of baseball here. Probably, who's going to maintain? No one has really been stepping up for a lot of, as we know, probably townwide for a lot of these committees. Um, mm -hmm. But no, there's no baseball parent right now that we're seeing that's going to take this over. Um, Jeff Canepa has been doing it, but he's been very clear that this, this is the last year. He's been doing some of it, actually. I do kind of sure. share it. Um, you know, do we pursue this water? Um, the field isn't really what it should be. Now we have, I think, $7,000, I believe the rec committee has, to try to remediate anything we feel needs to be remediated, but that includes the basketball court, which I'm sure you guys hear a lot of complaints mm -hmm. about too. Yeah. The tennis courts, the water, and just uh, Julie Petty too sent me a list. A lot of issues with the soccer field doesn't fit in the space, but I think that's really a design issue. I don't know. I mean, it was never designed for there to be a soccer field there. So. It's kind of this multi-use, so the soccer field runs over the base paths and stuff. Yeah, there. right. Yeah, the outfield plays havoc with the soccer ball. Yeah. Or the infield. That the, yeah. the, the infield. It, it, it always has. Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's issues. Um, uh, what else? I guess that's it. I mean, we have this 7K, but I don't think that's going to get us too far. Yeah. yeah. And then who does it? I mean, it's a lot. I mean, I'm working. I work two jobs. I'm coaching. Yeah. I'm yeah. Re the rec committee leadership resigned, so I'm doing that. So I'm doing the baseball field. Uh, uh, thank there's you, only John. so much. You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. Um, that some towns, you know, just in, just something to think about is. So it varies by town. Sometimes, like Sunderland, there's a baseball association. They do that. That'd be mm -hmm. kind of, I guess, like our rec committee or the old Conway sports. Yeah. I think Waitley has the highway department does their fields in Northampton. So there's different models. Okay. Um, All of those three towns get help with by Frontier too, though. Mm -hmm. If if Frontier uses your field, oh yeah, they yeah. mow it and they maintain it to an extent, and they seed it and they water it and other things oh, too. Yeah. Well, how the he field? And the hurley he the big field yeah. yeah and so that was always one of my dreams is to get frontier to have one of their teams mm -hmm. practice in conway and get help with the maintenance in that way we're the only town that doesn't have a frontier practice and we're the only town that doesn't share in the benefits of frontier maintenance well we'll have to check on that yeah and deerfield academy has done a lot of generous work on different towns fields too mm -hmm. so. but i think they feel like we're too far away this would be a way to go yeah who's your, who's your contact in there in Deerfield? Yeah. Uh, Jeff, um, Jeff, Jeff Galley. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. I know Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and he sent a guy out once and we uh, spent a day in the rain like laying out the field and the lines and this guy was like super precise and really helped me lay out all the bases and stuff mm. correctly. Okay. So um, you know, I'm not here with an agenda but just to update and okay. maybe get you guys thinking about some of this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, if a grant comes along, I don't know, you know, do we have, uh, or is this, you know, certainly we'll try to move it forward in the rec committee, but should we go for the water? Should we get, try to get the shed? Can, the can water? we get a hose down from the church? Is that awful far? I, 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 I'm, you could, you could. I'm not gravity, sure. gravity would say yes. <laughs> Um, an outside uh, speaker. There, 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 is, there is a, a parks 
grant, more or less, um, that I can look into. But um, having a everything that you want done, mm -hmm. you know, a wish list in detail, saying we need this that looks like this, we need this that looks like this, all that, that would help. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we can get some preliminary estimates of how much those things would cost and see what would fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, what the town contribution would be. We have rec money also in the, uh, in the uh, community preservation um, uh -huh. pool, too. So that's, that's not something to, uh, to overlook. That, that could be a town contribution for whatever other money there was. So maybe or, we try to document some of this, Tom, and get some costs and so forth. Is there anywhere we can put a shed that's far enough away from the river? I mean, it feels like the river is the problem. It, it's not it, to be useful. That's the only problem is it's not that useful if it's way far away. But it's yeah, right at the edge of the parking lot. It's a question up in the of parking lot, possibly yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it's a question of filling out the NOI, which is mm -hmm. a it's it's much more involved than the than the RDA, um, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. If so, we're up at the parking lot, is that, I don't know, but is that 200 feet? Or yeah, you're yeah. way over 200 feet yeah. there. So we wouldn't need, an, we wouldn't need any con right. con permitting if we right. put a shed up at the parking lot? You mean if on it's the parking lot? The upper oh, parking lot. right, the lot. edge of it. The upper yeah. part. Sure. Yeah, that's far enough away. 200 feet? Yeah, yeah that's more than 200 uh, How big a tractor do you need? I, uh, Can you see my truck? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if, if, if Ron can store it like down at the ball field. I like a, it's right. a big lawn track. It's a heavy duty lawn yeah. tractor. Mm -hmm. Okay. All I'm right, just thinking though, like some of the equipment. The the other thing, the original dugouts. I'll mention this as I'm thinking what Heidi would say. She originally did the dugout design, and I think the original plan had a little uh, shed attached to one of those, and actually the concrete. As a spot for that, so maybe that. So I think she originally envisioned masonry uh, dugouts. Okay. Hmm. And I don't know if that would help if that's already permanent and the shed could go there. I guess that's something we would have to look into. Yeah, certainly there's 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 money in in CPA for renovating or maintaining sports situations, right, Tom? Yeah. Maintaining. Recreation. Recreation. Yeah. So. Uh, so you may apply want, for, to them for like a grant. You, you may want to speak with them directly. All right. Yeah. And specifically the dugouts, DA just did, uh, just donated dugouts to Frontier's baseball field. Um, oh, at the high and, school? And they made them in-house yeah. and then brought mm. them over and installed them in one day. Um, and the cost to do it privately was four, fourteen or $15,000 was the estimate in DA. Like that made them appear. Mm. <laughs> uh, so that might be, I mean, it seems like they have a affinity for dugout building, uh, and they might mm -hmm. be approached just for dugouts. I mean, one of my kids on uh, my team, uh, I got two kids whose fam fathers and mothers work at Eagle Brook, too. And one of them that does their capital projects, I can ask him. Okay. All right. Okay, great. In your spare time. In my spare time. Yeah. Thank you, John. All right. appreciate you coming Thank in. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Good seeing you. Thanks a lot. Hey. Since since Greg is here, yeah, I want to move. I want to move oh, yeah. Greg up on the agenda. Well, he was ten minutes late. We're ten minutes late for him. Yeah, I know. Come on in, Greg. Right. Let's see. Right. Hey. How is everyone? Good. Okay. Good. How, are you? How about you? Good. Good. Okay, Tom, do you want to run over this with uh, Greg? Yeah. Um, we uh, we have been there. There are things we're interested in. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the property, there's some. Uh, Yes, I only have one copy of this. Um, there are some timeline issues for us, just so that you know. Yeah. Um, we've what, got, what are you talking? You're talking about this? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We've got two different timelines that we're yeah. working on. One is a timeline for a special town meeting. Yeah. And the other is um, more of a 
sort of an internal real estate procurement okay. uh, guideline. So um, the notice for that we're intending to buy a piece of land has to be 30 days prior to closing. Okay. Uh, really, it's it's pretty much um, eight days before that that we have to send the notice in. Okay. That's going to be published 30 days before. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's 38 days there. We're already pretty much 30 days into the process. Right. Um, and we have um, a, a question about um, since there's a dirt floor, mm -hmm. we are wondering whether or not there's any possibility that there's any. Um, and you know, machines have been stored in there, yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we're wondering if there's any possibility of contamination yeah. of the well, okay. um, which we wouldn't want. And there is the possibility that we can actually get some money to get somebody to look at it and say, either it needs more investigation or it doesn't need any more investigation. Yeah. I think the probability is pretty good that they'll come back and say, no, it doesn't need any yeah. more investigation based on a Thing. But that's going to take two or th at least two or three weeks okay. to get together. So that makes it, um, but it, we don't know how long it's going to take. All right. So the idea was that we were wondering whether you would be open to an extension of the 90 days for the right of first refusal. Well, the... I guess the answer to that, I came to this board, I don't know if you remember that, I came to you last fall um, telling you I was planning on selling my property and I was notified then that when I got a bona fide offer you'd show interest and until then you didn't want to make any moves towards uh, a potential purchase or anything. Man, now we're and getting I, serious. And I have a guy that's serious and my obligation to you is 90 days and I guess being that you didn't show interest last fall, I guess I'm wondering why I should extend the 90 days. I mean, you have to understand what you're asking me. You're, you're asking me to extend the 90 days to something the town might not even vote to do. Is my, is my man going to wait beyond 90 days? He's anxious to buy it tomorrow. He, I don't think he's going to want to wait longer than 90 days, and I'm uninclined to make him. So I don't know where that leaves town. I'm not trying to put you in a place, but I did approach you last fall with this proposal of selling it, and I didn't get any more than a couple minutes of conversation over it, and then got sent on my way, so. Well, yeah, it, I think at that time you weren't ready to do anything until the spring, correct? Well, I understand, but, yeah. um, okay. you know, um, I am clearly am now, and my obligation is 90 days, and I, I in order to even get to that point, I had to have some negotiation with Kenny, mm -hmm. and I guess um, on my, not to sound cold about it, but that puts him first on my list. Um, he's, he's patient, he's patiently waiting, and I don't think the next guy might do that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Some people would get discouraged and, and go away. Um, well, if, if he was if he was willing to to say, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll give the town the benefit of that extra sixty days, and you and he talked about that, would that be amenable to you? If if you're talking extra sixty days beyond the ninety, I have no interest. I don't want to find out I can't sell my house because the town vote this fall or winter. I I'm not into that. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be. We would have a special town meeting before that. Yeah. But there's certain things we need to do before we get to that town meeting, like Tom said. We need to do some soil checking. I understand uh, that. We, we would need uh, you know, to set up the town meeting. All of that takes time. We can't, we can't do anything without a town meeting. I understand that, but you can't do anything without a vote. And you can have all the good intentions in the world, and if they vote not to do it, then where am I left if Kenny goes away? Well, that, that's why if you speak to Kenny and Kenny's all right with that, then that, that keeps you and he in the game. Correct? I can speak to him, but okay. I can tell you if his inclination is like mine, it's probably not going to happen. Well, okay. And I hate to be 
hard nosed about it, but um, it's I, I just I feel I feel obligated to him as much as I do the town and to push him aside to extend the 90 days, especially in light of talking last fall. I, mm -hmm. I, I brought this up last fall and I understand that there was limited things you could do interest wise until I had a bona fide offer, but you could at least have discussed the idea of if you were interested or not then and this might be going smoother if you had, I guess. Well, you know, I, I, I got the impression that when we talked last fall that um, uh, you weren't ready to do anything until the spring. At least that's that's the impression uh, I well, got. Well, I understand, but now we're into summer and I'm certainly not anxious to push that into late fall and winter to mm -hmm. find out the town is doesn't have an appetite for it. Mm -hmm. Would you have an objection to us talking to your buyer? Um, I guess I would. I can talk to him and I'll talk to him tomorrow about it, but okay. um, his wife's pretty excited to get in the place and I find it, um, you know, I find it that it, I, I find it unlikely that they would want to wait. I mean, they're they're patient about it, but 90 days is quite a time for them to wait as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have to understand as well, after the 90 days, he, he can't apply for the bank financing until the town has stepped, stepped aside. And um, so now you're talking another six weeks or five weeks mm -hmm. beyond 90 plus. Um, you know, the timeline's getting pretty tight there for him to do any kind of work on the house and mm -hmm. um, for me to get out and do what I have to do. Fall isn't a mm -hmm. good time for me as well. Yeah. yeah. So I, I am sympathetic to your plight, but um, again, not to sound cold, but it's, it's, it's the town problem. It's not mm -hmm. mine. I, I have to take care of my business. He has to take care of his and you have to do what you can do to take care of the towns, and I I have to put mine first, and I'm sure he feels the same. But uh, I I will ask him for you, and um, I don't know. I I guess you'll have to think if if you did have interest. I mean, I, this is the first time I've that I've heard that you did have interest, potential interest. I was not really. I came here tonight fully as. You know, expecting the possibility that you were going to tell me you weren't interested. So, um, it's it's the first inclination I've had that you are. And well, you know, there's certain there's certain procedures we have to follow. I understand okay. that. We're definitely uh -huh. complicated. Yeah. You know, we like I, at the at the time of the inspection that we did, we yeah. couldn't just say to you, "Hey, Greg, we're we're." I understand that, this. but understand it's the yeah. town that put the 90 days in place. It wasn't mm -hmm. my doing. It mm -hmm. was. It was a previous board that decided 90 days was a fair was a fair uh, amount of time, and mm -hmm. I I I feel bad for your plight, but not bad enough to push Kevin aside <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. to see what happens. If sure. if it if it was something that the money's appropriated and town didn't have to vote, and you said, "Hey, we're really interested," would you do it? I probably would, but to wait beyond the 90 to possibly have town voted down when it when is our 90 days up when did our process well, it was start april 30th that we received it so okay may so. june july july 30th um, more or less uh, okay functionally so. it's the 27th i think july 27th okay so we're at um we're at the end of, of may so we have say two months from now correct yeah okay let me let me ask you let me just ask you this um i understand that there's due process is there any way you could get a feel for town appetite on this any other way is there yeah no, you hold a special meeting it's, to, got, it's, it's got to go through a through a a, a town meeting an okay. official it's got to be an official special town meeting, meeting right yeah yeah, um, yeah it can't it can't yeah. be, can't be a poll or anything like that. it's got to be a yeah. special town meeting yeah well, well i've just i I'm trying to think of something that could help, but mm -hmm. extending it beyond the 90 is no help on my end. So, all right. So we would need a we would need a decision by the end of July. So we would need a town meeting uh, before the end of July. Yeah. Okay. Is that doable? 
It is. I can't guarantee that we would know what the actual condition, you know, we wouldn't have the professional opinion that it was okay, you know, that the town, you know, would probably be okay in buying it. We, we, need, we need soil samples. In well, the, the we may plant. not. We need a determination on whether we need them or not. Well, we can so so it's, a, it's the first phase out of three that, that we could conceivably do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and and it's, a, it's a historical survey and just uh, somebody walking around looking and saying, you know, is this, does it look like there might be contamination here? And again, uh, my bet is that they're going to come back and say, no, it's a, it would be okay, but that gives the town something to fall back on. I understand. You know, and uh, on the other hand, if they came back and said, oh, actually, we've, we've, we see some problems and we would advise you to get some soil samples, then that's something that, you know, would definitely take it beyond the range of what we can do right now. So the initial inspection is strictly a visual inspection? There's no sample? There's historical, involved. right, right, no sample. Historical meaning? Who owned the, who property, owned the property, what, was what done they there, did with it? Which is pretty easy for this property. Yeah, okay, all right. Now, and that costs maybe three or $4,000. That money may be available, and it may be that we can get it uh, approved this week. Um, from the Council of Governments, um, but we may not get it approved, and we don't know after we get it approved how quickly we can get somebody to actually do that work. Okay. Well, we would have to we would have to indicate that it's, that it's yeah. time is of the essence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I hope the board understands my position on this. It's not oh, it's sure. not yeah. me being a, a absolutely a mean spirited. No, it's not, um, not at it's all. me not taking all. care of Greg Rose's business and I, keeping I, Kenny in mind as well. I so, I, under, I understand that totally. Um, I if if you're interested and you can make it work, I welcome the opportunity to okay. work with you more on this. But um, I'll talk to Kenny and I'll get back to you and. All right, oh, so, sure. so our next step is to, to get it visually inspected. And, yeah, a phase one uh, inspection. Okay. Let, let coordinate it with Greg, and let's see if we can get that done quickly. Okay. Well, uh, well let's make... Uh, I mean, you rent... Identify you rent the one source. half. You, you rent the one half. We'll you see. Can, you can go in there and do that anytime. Um, my yeah. half, there's nothing... You saw it. There's not much of anything. Yeah, no, it, things they trip over. So yeah, no, it, um, it 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 would be it would be on the on the the sheep barn half. That, absolutely, that, uh, we um, would be interested in doing that. So any time that if you well, felt to do that, it's, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So all right. great. Um, all right. Any great. more questions yeah, or coming questions? In. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. We're good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yep. Thank you for the time. And um, call me if you have any questions or instructions. <laughs> thank you. Sure. Do you. Do you have Greg's number? Yeah. Okay, good. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, uh, next item on the agenda is the Capital Improvements Planning Committee Work Plan. Tom, we got a plan. We got a plan here. Huh? Well, I put down some ideas based on, you know, what I... Oh, this didn't come from the committee? No, no. This, this came not. from you. Yeah. Oh, this came from you. Okay. Yeah. Was there any input from the committee on this? Uh, there hasn't been okay. yet. They they've had these these ideas for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, I put them down in a, you know, as concisely as I can here. Okay. Um, the uh, the first is is just sort of a statement of where we are. Uh, there's a committee that is responsible for the development and maintenance of the town's capital plan. Mm -hmm. And this past winter, the policy was passed that this is all items that cost more than $5,000 and are intended to last more than five years, mm -hmm. which includes a lot more equipment than was on the preliminary, well, maybe not a lot, but it includes more equipment than was on the preliminary list that they had. Right. Which um, was based on 10,000 and 10 years. Yeah. No. And five years. And five years. Ten, okay. ten thousand five years. Um, so, uh, what I conceive of their charge, anyway, is that they 
should ensure that the annual proposals for the capital stabilization account be sufficient to cover the projected costs uh, going forward. Fine. Um, and then I just list a preliminary list of categories of capital items. Right now, the only thing that's on the list that they're considering is the first two items under highway department, uh, plus um, the um, police, fire, and ambulance vehicles. Not the equipment, just the vehicles. Right, right. Uh, so we do not include anything about the grammar school. And um, I just offer a correction to that one. So there is no grammar school capital planning committee. The school committee does it as a committee of the whole. Um, well, then that's, so that's, that's, that's what it is. But they're getting in touch with them for that function. All right. And, so, and the other thing is that the uh, grammar school has its own capital fund. That would be independent right. of whatever. So, so the reason they should maintain close communication is to be ready to take advantage of any opportunity to save money through the coordination of projects. For example, if they're working, if we know that the grammar school is going to be having some work done, we might be able to save mobilization costs if the town needed some work done that was of a similar vein. So it will be helpful for the two committees to be in touch with each other to know what's being done, when it's being done, etc. cetera. Um, so, so Conway so Grammar that's, School itself has a capital I, plan? I believe the current balance is 270, 250, 270. They, they have um, a, um, a capital, <coughs> capital stabilization fund. Right. I'm not sure how defined their capital improvements planning committee is. Do they, do they have one? It was dissolved following the roof it's project. It's the school committee, basically, right. and, it's, it's, and and uh, Bob, uh, Bob Decker, right? Bob Decker is Frontier. Is he right. the Deerfield delegate to Frontier? Does he do? He does he do any consulting with us on that? Oh no, grammar school. No. This no. would just be the grammar school. Okay. Yeah, and um, and I have a list. All right. So basically, Bruce is involved in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, sure. And of course, he relies on Bob Lesko a little bit. Bob Lesko. Um, yeah. right. But, uh, you know, and they have a list of projects, but it's not right. a capital plan. The last that I saw. So it has been fleshed have, out a little bit in terms of timelines and whatnot since okay, then. Okay, that, that's good. That's um, good. So all I'm saying is that they should maintain communication with the Conway group. I mean, maybe, maybe they could buy, they need to buy materials, bricks or something like that, you know. They can, go in on an order or something like that. I'm, I'm just very basic, just to see if there's anything that could be gained through uh, coordinating projects. Um, and uh, the budget season is dedicated to developing a proposal for capital spending. So outside of the budget season, the committee should be spending their time um, developing and refining its capital plan so that it knows um, that the projects that it's proposing for spending the following town meeting are you know, sufficiently covered in the capital plan. Um, this year, for example, for example, we saw um, uh, one pretty major item come in that hadn't been part of the capital plan at all, a new piece of equipment for, for the ambulance. And so that's fine, but now that needs to be incorporated into the capital plan, and we need to figure out in 10 years, you know, another $17,000 for that piece of equipment mm -hmm. to be replaced. So uh, that's the kind of work that uh, you know, flesh, fleshing out our own plan. So uh, the last time the capital planning committee met, it was during budget season, and the plan was the next time they met, it was going to be to begin working on the plan. And and all I'm saying is that, that we should and they make sure met that that happens. Yes. Uh, and time is growing very short for this. Um, 
uh, be prepared by, oh yeah, um, uh, they should, um, the, the committee should be prepared by the time capital projects are requested to participate fully in a discussion of costs and timing. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, that got a little elided there. Um, I expect the capital stabilization account to be deficient for several years. Um, the annual $125,000 investment was meant to cover highway department equipment and trucks, the police department cruiser, and the fire department vehicle, not even the, the fire trucks. Uh, though, though there was, one of the fire trucks was on, and that was the fire truck that we replaced after 25 years. That was actually on the capital plan. Um, $125,000 a year is not going to cover the other things that are needed once we, once we open up you know, the capital plan to all of the capital that is now considered necessary to be part of that plan. Yeah. It's yeah. probably about half of it, if, if that. So, uh, I mean, if... At so a will minimum, there be money freed up from wherever those things are now? Will they, like, be moved from the fire budget into the capital planning? It's just a running plan? total. It, it's just a running total in the capital plan. So, so how how much you spend? So they wouldn't be all paid for by the stabilization account. Oh, uh, the town decided not to fund the the fire department yeah. vehicle that way. The the new pumper, uh, and you know that's, I I believe that there will not be enough money in the capital stabilization right. fund to do that for major purchases. So that's another, that is exactly the kind of question that the Capital Improvements Planning Committee should be covering mm -hmm. and making sure that, that they so know that we do what's put necessary. Money into those things. Well, or, or we know where it's going to come from. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, relying on general stabilization is not a good long term strategy. Uh, we've done that for some smaller ticket items, which I think is fine. Um, relying on borrowing is not a good strategy because the town may or may not be in a mood for borrowing. So it's good to plan conservatively to be able to pay for everything that the town needs. And then uh, the committee can come back to the town and say, hey, the town needs more than we're able now to comfortably plan for. Uh, and there are ways of funding that. Um, let me just finish this first. Yeah. Um, and then the committee should develop a presentation for town meeting outlining the results of its planning efforts to prepare the town for higher annual investments in the future. And that should be the basis of them discussing the capital items that are presented for funding at the town meeting. Yeah. And some towns have all of their capital items just under one article. And it's presented by the capital planning committee and they say, all the departments have come to us. This is what they need. This is what our plan is. We can cover it. We are urging you to vote for this package. And it's a much neater way of getting things done. It's um, much more numbers-based, much more rational. Um, it's, it's a planned expense. It's something that can be much more easily defended than going piece by piece where, where people can question individual you know, it, it gets down into into micromanagement where people don't really know the operations of the of the departments. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for, for funding, we've done in the past debt exclusions, which exclude uh, the the town borrowing money and spending it above what our levy limit would be. We're we're excluding that from a proposition two and a half override, not permanently expanding uh, the town's. Uh, levy limit. There's also a capital exclusion mm -hmm. where if you're buying for, if you're buying capital, that also doesn't, can be done outside of an override. So there's debt and capital exclusion. I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. Did you know that, John? Mm -hmm. You did? Mm -hmm. You're just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No. So 
that is a, never come up. We know, mean, we've never done it as far as it, I know. It, it doesn't mean that the town, you know, is out of the woods uh, financially about its capital needs, which you know there's clearly a lot more of than is currently being planned for. But it does mean that the town is not going to be stuck if it really needs something, and you know, especially if it's been well planned for and everybody's been expecting it. If we happen to hit our levy limit, we can still have a capital exclusion mm -hmm. that allows us to buy that piece so, of equipment. Okay. If, if I, uh, the number six, I, I would say that the presentation shouldn't just be the results of the planning efforts. It should also be a justification of the concept of capital planning. Um, and to, to me, that's when I saw the, the, the at town meeting that that got defeated by the fellow standing against the wall saying, how many hours does it have on it? Um, you know, that's a foreseeable argument against it. And yeah. it, like, when yeah. I was thinking about it afterwards, I was kind of bothered that that argument was successful um, because the, it should have been planned for and met um, with, with a substantial argument in return. And I thought that that was kind of lacking. Um, and yeah. it's definitely yeah. going to be in the future because when you think about the New England sensibility of use it until it falls apart, um, this, you know, the, yeah, this right? is the first town meeting where. Ron was trying to make the case for an alternative and, to and, and he, that New England sensibility. Yeah, and, and he needed help. You should, know. Be, should be spelled out a little better. Yeah. yeah, and so I think with a better presentation and a better argument in advance, I think that that would, to, to the concept of capital. So he was sure. successful in the other piece of equipment, the less expensive one, but the, the expensive piece of equipment, right. th they, they argued no. And, right. he'll, and he'll be back doing it next year. Um, with that equipment six years old, I'm sure he will make the argument there's still a lot of good value for trade-in, but yep. we will see next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and, you know, and, and that's, this is exactly the kind of discussion that, that I was looking for, because what I'd like to do is to, is to um, bring in the, the, at least the chair of the capital planning meeting, maybe even a joint meeting, and say, this, this is the work we need done, yeah. you know, um, is everybody on board with getting this done by the time budget season happens, which is, you know, the I forward the results of departmental requests to the Capital Planning Committee in mid-December or, or late December. It, it, it could even be earlier than that. But so think of it as November, you know, being done with this capital planning process. And there's already templates for all of these things. They just need to be fleshed out. You need to figure out what the equipment is that's over $5,000 in the town and how often <coughs> it needs to be replaced and plug it in and then find out how much of a deficit we're running in our in our capital plan. Let, let's set up a joint committee with, with a joint meeting with the whole committee. Okay. And, so uh, I know that Dana has called around to verify who's who's still willing to serve on that committee. Uh, we're, we're, we've been uh, busy setting up. Uh, Lisa's been busy setting up uh, the uh, appointment process for FY19. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next item is the proposed contract for electricity aggregation. Um, we can we can all go over this contract between now and the next meeting. Um, you don't need anything on this tonight, and I, you know no. I, I'm pretty familiar with these contracts, so I am, am reading through this quickly. So I, this contract is really dependent upon another document, which was the RFP. This document basically says we'll follow the RFP, and I don't know whether that's been distributed. So, um, okay, I. I haven't seen. I haven't seen a. Uh, I don't. So, uh, I'm not sure. Bob Dean sent that. I don't out. know. I. I'll make sure I get it. Yeah, you should make sure that Bob Dean. And, yeah. When I when I saw this document, it was only like four pages. It's not that you know you could cover it all in four pages, but most of this is I, boilerplate. I, I've seen the RFP. Uh, but yes, not have, yes, through these channels. Yeah. 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 So yeah. can I ask when I when I read this. I was unable to determine from reading this how the town or the individual ratepayers in town 
would save money over the current, and I think that that should be fleshed out. Well, you're not going to find you're not going to find that in, in here. So we can talk about that just so that you and whoever watches watches this video at some point. And I don't know if you want to talk about aggregation, John, or I could, but. Uh, um, you, can, you, can, you can talk about it. So electrical aggregation means the town would would be purchasing their own electricity for everyone in town that's currently buying from Eversource. If you think of Eversource as the default electrical supplier for everyone in Conway who hasn't opted out to something else, everybody else who hasn't opted out to Viridian or some other supplier, we, we would be procuring the, the electricity. It would still be purchased by the individual customer. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, so that, that through a broker, the town would be procuring their electricity from somebody else, not Eversource. Somebody else would become the supplier of the, and responsible for the electrical supply for Conway. And the broker signs a set of contracts with a supplier and comes to Conway and says, I can supply you with electricity at this price. And if that price isn't lower than Eversource, we wouldn't do it. it it's the town that, so, that, that executes the contract. The contract. It's, it's, a, the, it's the town that executes the contract with the supplier. Right. So this is just the contract with the broker who goes and negotiates with with the electrical supplier this is the this is okay all of this will not happen for six or eight months while all of this gets vetted by the DPU so this broker colonial they write a plan for Conway's for Conway's aggregation they submit it to the DPU and the DOER and it has to get approved and then uh, then they and, and we're doing this in concert with hopefully 12 or 13 other towns in Franklin County or near Franklin County who are all going to be going out to bid together for our electricity so we have a significant amount of electricity that we're procuring okay. together. Okay? And, and, and so this broker will do the work of talking to all the select boards about what they want, merging all of their desires together, going out to bid for their electricity, and coming back to us with a set of bids. And, and all of that will take place in six or eight months, I imagine. So is there, will, will there be a contractual opt-out if, in fact, it's, it's more expensive so, than Eversource? So it, it does mention that in here, okay. but, but, but this, is just, this is just our contract with Colonial. It doesn't require us to buy any electricity. Yeah, all, all, this, all this is is a contract that says we're going to use this broker to procure the electricity and to guide the, um, the plans through the DOER and DPU. That's all this is. Later on, there's a contract between the individual uh, municipalities and the supplier who is the winning bidder for that load of electricity. And that bid, okay, obviously you're gonna know what that bid is and everybody in, everybody who is on the basic service of Eversource will get a letter saying, hey, here's the Eversource rate, here's the aggregation rate. You've got 30 days to say you want in, or if you don't want in, opt out. See, that's the answer to my question. So, so, so this, is every, this, this is all the individuals in all of these towns. But the town itself will have an opportunity to say, I like this price, we'll, we'll do it. And maybe that price will be two or three cents less than Eversource, or whatever it is. And, or the town may say, you're not low enough below Eversource that we're going to even bother to do it. So the select board will have the yes or no say over whether Conway wants to participate in the aggregation. If we say yes, then letters will be sent to everyone in Conway to say, do you want to be part of the aggregation? Any individual that doesn't want to be part of the aggregation can send a letter, return a postcard or make a phone call to say, I don't want to be part of the aggregation. Which is an important point. It is an opt-out system. Residents will be in unless they actively opt out. Uh, the other point is, is that one of, the, one of the things that the town can ask for, and that I anticipate a lot of Franklin County towns will, is a green energy option that costs somewhat more, but may still cost less than Eversource's cost. So 
that 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 is the kind of thing that uh, can be negotiated with the individual towns when they come out and talk with the towns. The two things that typically drive these aggregation, one is we would negotiate for an electricity price that would last for a couple of years, probably. Whereas Eversource has to go out for their bid every six months. So in the winter time, their electricity may cost more. Summertime, it may cost less. The price goes up and down, and you don't know. Um, it is possible that we may sign up for a two-year contract, and then Eversource will dramatically lower their price, in which case everyone is welcome to opt out and go back to Eversource. Ah. So, and, then, and, and if six months later Eversource raises their price, everyone can opt back in, gotcha. and there's no cost for opting in or out. The other drive for this thing, other than stable pricing, is green. You know, buying more green electricity. So we may have two flavors of electricity people can choose. One would be Eversource level of greenness, and one would be somewhat more green. It's a Texas company. And well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I hope that we that doesn't get chosen. But there is plenty of green electricity that's made right here in New England. Oh, that massive wind uh, contract with uh, state signs. Great example with the Belgian company. Right. Yeah. But so, but so this is just the contract with Colonial. It doesn't actually detail what it is we expect Colonial to do. So to make sense of what we expect Colonial to do, you really might want to take a look at the RFP that we yeah. sent to Colonial that they responded to. And, uh, and if, if you don't have that, I can get that to you. Or you can get it from Bob. I think both of you. I think you have completely and fully and exhaustively answered my question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are we ready to go on? Okay. Any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? I don't have any. Okay. Tom, your update? Other than that thing from mm -hmm. Parks and Rec. Originally, they got on the agenda, you know, for uh, for the batting cage issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so this whole ball field thing was actually an item not anticipated, uh, certainly for me. Okay. Okay. Um, So uh, uh, I have a bunch of news here. Um, not covering the batting cage. The Parks and Rec uh, was offered a batting cage as a no donation. And it requires uh, an abbreviated notice of intent. The donor is offered to complete the NOI, and the committee seems willing to move ahead. That is still the case. This has been a day-by-day -day, uh, adventure. Uh, for your information, the Conservation Commission is sometimes involved in situations where landowners have done work that should have been previously reviewed. While the Commission does not go out of their way to find such projects, when they arise, they act to try to mitigate the problem. I'm sure that if you hear about such situations, you'd check with the Chair or me before offering an opinion. As spring progresses, there may be an uptick in those areas of Conservation Commission work. I don't like the use of the word tick. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, the Personnel Committee has been reviewing the employee handbook as the last version is five years old. When department heads have had a chance to comment, we'll finalize it in the Personnel Committee and bring it to the Select Board for approval. Then we'll distribute it to empl employees close to the beginning of the fiscal year and give annual notices at about the same time going forward. Uh, this will probably be more towards late July mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, also, I'm preparing job descriptions for the new administrative assistant position for boards, as well as one for the town clerk assistant, and I'm running those by the personnel committee and hope to be advertising those positions yeah. soon. Uh, I know the Conservation Commission is particularly interested in getting someone on board as quickly as possible. Uh, in departmental news, uh, I was contacted by a resident who was unhappy about the level of publicity regarding the recent town meeting and election. Uh, the displeasure was centered primarily on borrowing for bridge repair, but included a general complaint regarding prior notification. Although I explained the town does much more than required by state law to be sure all residents are informed about town business, the resident remained unsatisfied. To me, this shows the need for more civic education, both in the schools and for adults. Mm. Now, is, did this particular individual um, get the, the town report? Yes. And the warrant? The warrant? 
and uh, complained that the uh, election notice was hidden in the back of the warren. And I explained that the election is actually a continuation of town meeting and was in its proper order, but that was unsatisfactory to the resident um, who thinks something else ought to be done. So just in case you hear, uh, this is just well, a notice. Th there, there, was, um, there was an article in the paper about our election, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it was really an issue of the, over, of the two and a half, prop two and a half exclusion election um, that they were there, upset there, about. That was part of it, yes. And it was it was broadened, though. Mm -hmm. um, the sense was that if more people had known about it, more people might have shown up to the meeting. Um, my sense is the turnout was relatively good at this <laughs> town meeting. Yeah. And special town, and the pre-town meeting. Yes. Yeah, um, we, we, have, we have the pre-town meeting. It was in the paper. Um, you sent the report out. Certainly did on he, the website. Did he or she have any suggestions as to how it could have been better better done? Um, well, they did suggest a town-wide mailing, and I did point out that that was the town report and town warrant. We could do uh, a reverse 911 call. Which, yeah, yes, and you know, um, I know the uh, old emergency management director used to do that, and uh, mm. I will, I will, I, it, I, I, I mentioned it, uh, but I will mention it again that it would be a good idea. Those are free, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And our pre-town meeting is so is such a good idea that it's being emulated in neighboring towns now. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yes, Deerfield yeah. is actually looking to implement it. Yeah. Um, and they really need to do that. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I was recently contacted by a resident about the house at the corner of Matthews and Husick Roads. Um, Bob Armstrong and I had seen a presentation on vacant and abandoned houses the evening before, so I suggested convening an ad hoc committee to inventory, assess, and prioritize work on abandoned houses to provide a rationale for subsequent legal work. Is that house abandoned? Or? It, it is girls. not. It is vacant. It, it, okay. It's vacant and the taxes are being paid, so yes. oh, okay. it's not abandoned. There's not. Uh, yeah. yeah, abandon is when yeah. the taxes are not being paid. So uh, in, in the fir in the meeting of Furcock, they really never even defined what abandoned really meant. Uh, it seemed to me that they, they sort of avoided it. It, it. it was one of the categories of uh, of problems that could be addressed in specific ways, it's, which is how Conway has tended to address them. The house looks terrible. Mm. It's two houses away from mine, <laughs> so I see it. Um, and I wish we could do more about it than uh, we can do now. Okay. So, well, well and, we, you know, well, many of us see that house when we turn up Lucid Road on the shortcut to Greenfield, so, so um, it's, well, it, it's a popular road. What yeah. we need to move forward is a committee to inventory, assess, and prioritize work to provide a rationale for legal work, to provide the uh, due process as it were, for taking any further steps. Otherwise, any particular action could be argued to be arbitrary and capricious. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, did suggest um, that to the caller, uh, but the caller was not enthusiastic about uh, participating in that. Um, Who determines whether a vacant property is a, a public safety issue in our town? There are different kinds of public safety issues, and it could be the fire department. Or the Board of Health. Uh, if it's not yeah, fire. Um, the Board of Health determines if it's a health risk. Um, so, uh, and I did refer him to the Board of Health. Um, they will typically act if they get a complaint saying there have been animals seen mm -hmm. going in or out of the house. Uh, wild animals, not, you know, domestic mm -hmm. animals. Um, so, and they have various options. Uh, our Board of Health has been fairly, has dealt with a fairly light hand um, and has criteria that they use. Um, they could be heavier handed about things, but that this is something that the, such a committee would uh, be able to, to recommend anyway. In, in the uh, first meeting that we went to, they had a whole series of actions you could take regarding the house. Uh, and, and they have a, a huge checklist 
and then they actually had a kind of a formula you could use to combine the scores of all of the things you measured about the house and and could and they and you would do this for you could say all of the houses in town or all of the houses in town that meet some criteria and uh, and then determine which are the worst ones that you should deal with first so, and, but it, it, you know, and then the questions came up, what do you do with a house like that that's not vacant? Uh, and so, abandoned didn't necessarily mean vacant. It was, it, yeah, it was sure. Lots of problems. Yeah. Uh, in other news, I am preparing the contract for the 2018 Festival of the Hills, which has been requested by the Festival of the Hills Committee, mm -hmm. and we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Great. Okay. I'll ha also have a letter regarding renewable energy as called for by the town meeting resolution for the next agenda. Um, the, the Board of Selectmen is supposed to send a letter to legislators and the governor expressing the sentiments uh, uh, in the resolution. Okay. Usually it's the town clerk, and our town clerk was very pleased that for once it was the select board who had that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and finally, I've contacted Senator Hines's office for the particulars and timing of his Amendment 318 to fully fund rural regional school districts in anticipation of a supporting letter from this board. The Budget Conference Committee has not yet been appointed, so it will be some time yet. Can um, I speak to that? Sure. Um, okay, so it doesn't fully fund regional school districts. It provides an extra $100 per student no. to districts that meet a criteria. Uh, more fully fund is what I meant. Um, but uh, this is huge for Conway. Like, like one of the biggest things that's come out of Boston for that, because it, yeah. it's a small price tag. It's a 1.5 million price so, tag. So rather than deliberate it now, um, perhaps uh, we could wait till it's on the agenda and then we can, uh, we can uh, express our deliberative opinions it's, uh, when it's on the agenda. It's passed the Senate. It has not passed the House. Right. Well, and and yeah, and I'm happy to put it on the agenda for further discussion, and I will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's that's. Uh, You're right. It's huge. And if you ever see Adam, you should thank him. He put in a lot of work. Thank you. Yeah. It's my hand. It's my hand. Thank you, Tom. Great. All right. Next item: concerns of the selectmen. We have any concerns, selectmen? No. No. Uh, I don't see any mail. I don't see any announcements. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 11th, 2018. Um, um, there were some complaints that came in. Um, there's another complaint uh, in, in the mail. I don't, I don't have a mail for it. Just things that uh, uh, the select board should be aware of. One of them I promised the select uh, writer I would let the select board know. That's the one with two uh, two emails on it. Right. Uh, can't even okay. remember what the topic was at this point. Uh, we're talking about, are you talking about this one? Uh, no, the other one. There are two emails. Oh, right, yeah. This is about the uh, Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Someone was uh, disturbed that uh, there was uh, noise coming from a, a work operation on Memorial Day and wrote twice and included movies of the work that we're doing. Right. Uh, so I, and I, I promised him that I would express that concern to the select board. I, I think he realizes that it's it, it's not legally out of bounds, but he was uh, nonetheless wishing that uh, people wouldn't do that. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Okay. Uh, and and, and uh, the other one, is there another dog complaint there? Yeah, we, this, yeah, yeah we, this we did have another dog complaint about uh, the situation we'd had before with Mr. Moriarty. And. Uh, Do you refer these to Kenny? 
Yes. Okay. And 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 Joe, um, and I, I will reiterate that, um, as I understand, the the last time the board discussed this, the, the board was in general agreement that the the uh, dog owner should get a ticket for every complaint. Absolutely. That, that yeah. came in at this point because yeah. the complaints are pretty much considered credible mm -hmm. uh, without further um, evidence at this point. Yeah. This is on uh, uh, Boyden Road. Oh, I know all about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that passes legal muster, but there's... Okay, we're not going to... Well... Uh, Doesn't the person any, receiving a ticket have to have a due can process? Be appealed. Anything can be appealed. Okay. And there's a method for the person for the uh, ticketed individual to appeal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So my my just and this is just me trying to understand. So um, if June eleventh is the next meeting, and if say, say like uh, getting the not just the letter to Adam Hines, but the letter to uh, our state, I mean our, our state rep. Um, and also just a, you know, a, a desire to get a letter out to the general community saying this is something where if you write your state rep, this could have a beneficial impact. Um, and if if we didn't want to wait till June 11th to set that in motion, how would I go about doing that? Okay, we want to send a, we want to send a letter in support of um, the Senate Senator amendment. Hines. Right. That amendment. Okay. And I'd like to send a letter to Senator Hines saying thank you. Uh, letter to uh, 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 Kulik, Kulik saying push it. this uh, absolutely and as a board or as yourself uh, as a board as a board, as a board. and mm -hmm. then um, a letter to the community on a website this you know, to the grant to the school community etc saying look what we're doing do this too because this it has an impact now and keeping okay. it in the newspaper now is like a really good thing okay in I'll make opinion. a motion that we put together a letter for Senator Hines, for Representative Kulik, and anyone else that, that uh, uh, you want on that list, okay? And uh, when, when Tom or Lisa has that ready, we'll just come in and sign it, okay? Do I have a second on that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. So okay. this would be um, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting is when this... Okay. Uh, We're concerned for the selection, right? I mean, uh, either way. Yeah. Either way. Sure. And and, and seeing Phil, it's, you can coordinate with, with Tom. And seeing its non-controversial nature, I think an expansive viewpoint of our limitations would be in order. Okay. Okay. Do you want to draft it? Sure. Okay. And just just let us know when it's ready. We'll we'll all sign it and we can send it out. All right, uh, again, next Thank meeting you. is the elect. You're welcome. Uh, and we're going to have to take a vote to go into executive session from which we will um, adjourn. The reasons for executive session, reason six, to consider the purchase of real estate. Uh, and uh, discussing that in an open meeting would have an effect on our negotiating position. Um, so we're going to do that in executive session. And the second reason is to... Uh, to comply with any general or special law to review and approve executive session minutes. Phil, do I have? Second. Okay, oh. a vote. Just say yes. Yes. Uh, Bob, yes. It roll call vote, and I'll say yes.